everyone, it's Michelle. In today's video, I will be reviewing for you three sunscreens, but they're pretty much the same. And that is the Japan exclusive Copper Tone Perfect UV Cut Gel Cream in one, two, and three. So I originally tried the Pink Tube one a couple of years back. My friend and I, we swapped our favorite sunscreens and this was hers at the time. And mine was the Canmic Mermaid Gel UV sunscreen SPF 50 plus immediately fell in love with the one in the pink tube I believe she picked this up at one of those small Korean beauty shops in the downtown area of Toronto I finished this up I had a couple of friends visiting Japan at the time so I requested that they pick up all three sunscreens for me and bless their souls because it took a while for them to find all three because apparently at the time it was super popular in Japan and it was almost always sold out. Now that I've hyped up this Japan exclusive sunscreen a bit, I hate to tell you all, but not only are they exclusive to Japan, meaning they're very difficult to get outside of the country. My friend, when she found it, I was kind of surprised because I can't find this on any international market. And the second one is that like all lovely Japanese sunscreens, these are discontinued. Usually in Japan, they reformulate the sunscreens frequently with some latest technology, always improving the formula, which is nice, but at the same time, I didn't think there was anything wrong with these. So it's kind of a shame. Either way, I still wanted to review the sunscreens for you all because one, I wanted to keep you all up to date as to what I'm using in my skincare routine. And I have been rotating these three sunscreens. I know I did wrong by not following my empty before newbie rule, but because the summertime was here, I really wanted to wear a water resistant sunscreen. And these are the ones that I have in my collection. And I thought I would just open all three and rotate them frequently. The second reason is to just spur some interest towards Japanese sunscreens. I have tried a few of them and all were cosmetically elegant, really easy to use in my skincare routine. Also, if you're ever going to visit Japan, I think it's worth checking out some of the small grocers or beauty shops and trying out some sunscreens that are not so easily available to the North American market, international market in general, and just try something different. So having said that, let's get on to the review. The general description about these three sunscreens, as well as the ingredient list, I checked out on ratzellacosme.com. Amazing resource for anything Japanese beauty related. It's one of the best websites I found that translate a bunch of different descriptions and ingredient lists of different Japanese beauty products. And it also informs the website visitor whether or not something has been discontinued and reformulated. And that's where I found out that these were discontinued. Let's start off with the description. It's pretty much the same for these three sunscreens. So it is a water-based creamy gel formula that spreads evenly, absorbs quickly. It has pH protect technology, so it reacts to the skin's acidic pH upon contact to transform into a skin bonding veil. Leaves the skin feeling moisturized and silky smooth. It's water resistant for both face and body, and it's made in Japan. So these are priced at 900 yen each, very good prices. And the amount is 40 grams. So $9 Canadian for 40 grams. That's why I'm saying that even though they're Japanese exclusive sunscreens, I really think it's worth checking out some of the drugstore priced sunscreens in Japan if you ever get a chance to visit. Packaging wise, more or less all the same opaque tube with a white twist off cap. And there are three different types of this sunscreen. The pink tube that is number one. So it's for skin that burns easily and doesn't tan. The orange tube is for skin that tends to burn then tan. And number three is the blue tube. It's for skin that tans easily and doesn't burn. So for me, if I were to actually go by skin type, I would choose the blue tube at three. But like I said at the beginning, they're all more or less the same. So let's get into the ingredients list. The first 12 ingredients for all three of these sunscreens the exact same ingredients within the first 12 ingredients we do have the uv filters so it's octinoxate and juvenile a plus and it also has some hydrating ingredients such as glycerin 
hyaluronic acid, soluble collagen, and ceramide NP. There's also some alcohol in the formula. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the list in the first 12 ingredients. I believe there's also some fragrant components in the formula, but when I use this, I don't smell anything. So both with the alcohol and the fragrance, it is super light. Just to reiterate, the first 12 ingredients in all three are the exact same. Where it differs are just the rest of the ingredients that follow afterwards. So for the pink one, it mostly consists of soothing ingredients with vitamin E in the formula. For an additional antioxidant protection, number two, which is the orange bottle, it also has soothing ingredients. And I also noticed it has ascorbyl glucoside in the formula, which is a derivative of vitamin C. And then for the number three sunscreen, which is in the blue tube, I also noticed that the highlighted ingredients consisted of additional antioxidant protection, as well as skin conditioning properties. So that's where these three sunscreens slightly differ. It's within their highlighted ingredients. How I've been rotating these in my skincare routine is that I would reach for the pink one, when my skin would have a bad breakout, it's a bit more red, I want something with more soothing ingredients, I would reach for this. If I felt like my skin was normal, was going about my day, wanted something that may potentially add some brightening benefits, I would reach for number two in the orange tube. And when it came to beach time or just being exposed in the sun for a long period of time, that's when I would reach for number three in the blue tube. Frankly, I don't think any of that made a difference. I, for the most part, think they all performed the same. It was probably more so a placebo effect with how I thought these sunscreens would function and give me additional skincare benefits. Now for swatching on my hand. Again, all textures are the same. So they look like this. They are in a gel cream formula. And while initially applying it looks a bit white, but as you can see, it's just blending into my skin very easily and very quickly. It's super light. Sure, there is a bit of shine for the finish compared to, you know, my hand without the sunscreen, but anyone can work with this, even with oily skin types, because it's not so offensive that it's going to make you look like a grease ball. It's just a nice light sheen that is very easy to cancel out with some powder on your face. Like I said, very easy to apply this sunscreen. It's actually so easy to apply that for reapplication, it's a no-brainer. When I come out of the water after swimming in the sea, I just apply it all over my face and neck super easily. I don't need to reach for a mirror. I just know it's blending in right away, despite it looking a little bit white on initial application. Just blends in super easily doesn't feel sticky, doesn't feel greasy, doesn't dry out my skin any further, it just works. Today I did apply the pink one, so I usually just wait for it to form that UV film on my skin. I usually give about 10 to 15 minutes before I apply any makeup, and I'm still, you know, wearing makeup from today. I added a bit of highlighter and, you know, lip and eye products on my face, but in general, for the face area, my skin's looking pretty good, it's feeling really good. It wasn't feeling overly parched, overly greasy. It feels just right, exactly how one with drier skin wants to feel during the summer months. Even though this sunscreen claims that it has that pH technology where it forms a moisturizing film on the skin, I still don't skip out on my moisturizer or I don't apply a lesser amount. I don't really bank on this to add additional moisturizer. It just makes my skin feel and look nice throughout the day. Otherwise, I apply a normal amount of moisturizer like I usually would. Overall, I've been loving using these sunscreens in my skincare routine. Like I said, when I first tried the pink one a couple of years back, fell in love with it right away just because it was so easy to use. Again, cosmetic elegance. It always comes from the Asian type of sunscreens. Unfortunately, like I said, not only were these Japan exclusive sunscreens so super difficult to get online anywhere, but they have been discontinued. This seems to be the case in Japan where generally sunscreens are discontinued but reformulated to improve the technology and performance. So if these end up getting reformulated, I hope they just 
reformulate to one sunscreen. I really don't think there's a need for three different types. If they had to pick one of the three to reformulate, I would pick number two because this one had antioxidant properties, it was soothing, and also had a brightening ingredient in the formula, which was the vitamin C derivative. Out of all three, I found this one had the better highlighted in ingredients, but they were all pretty good. And again, they performed the same. And that is it for the Copper Tone UV Cut Gel Cream Sunscreen Review. My apologies again for hyping up this sunscreen and doing a review on them, even though they were not only Japan exclusive sunscreens, but they have been discontinued. Either way, I hope it piqued your interest in Japanese sunscreens again in general because they're also very cosmetically elegant. And I just wanted to keep you all up to date of what I've been using in my skincare routine because in my last empties video, I did not even share one sunscreen and it's because I opened these ones and started using them a lot in my skincare routine during the warmer months. So wanted to share that with you. Also just pique your interest in Japanese sunscreens in general. If you are interested in purchasing Japanese sunscreens, I know YesStyle is very popular, especially for Korean beauty. That's where I personally like to shop for Korean skincare the most. But another website where it sells a lot of Japanese sunscreens, beauty products, and other Japan-related products in general is dokodemo.world. I like the price points. It's really good. It's more true to what is actually being sold in Japan. And I find if you buy enough and you pay for the shipping, it actually comes out a little bit less expensive than on Yes Style. So the times when I'm more interested in trying out some J Beauty, that's the website I tend to purchase from. If it's Korean Beauty, it's more so Yes Style, and they do carry Japanese products as well. So having said that, if you are interested in trying a Japanese sunscreen, one that is super popular, and I'm positive you have heard this from so many other skincare YouTubers that talk about Asian beauty products. It's the Biore Watery UV Gel Essence, whatever it's called. It's the one that I'm going to put a picture of right here. I actually featured this in my skincare routine as well as some of my top sunscreen favorites last year. So I'll leave links to those down below and I'll leave a couple of other links to other Japanese sunscreens that I have reviewed in the past. That is it for this video. As always, I hope you find content like this helpful and informative. If you did, please be sure to give the video a like. Subscribe to my channel down below for future videos. Leave a comment if you have any recommendations about other Asian beauty sunscreens you've tried, any of the new European sunscreens, I have access to them. I'm just not sure which ones to pick up. I do want to pick up one though, because when it comes to beach time being out in the sun for a long period, I freckle quite easily. I actually have quite a big area of freckles right here that popped up that I'm not so huge of a fan of. It's kind of looking like an age spot. So definitely want to pick up a Euro sunscreen with higher UVA protection. If you have any recommendations, please leave it in the comments down below. And yep, that is it for this video. See you all soon. Ciao.